It's not every day you get to meet a true hero, is what some people think. But I think true heroes are all around us. And you'll find them especially in the age services industry, working tirelessly to care for our older Australians, our parents, our grandparents, our loved ones. And despite the challenges that we've faced this year with bushfires and COVID-19, they have risen to the occasion, often putting themselves second, so they could meet the needs of those they care for first. As Chief Executive Officer of Leading Age Services Australia, I want to congratulate everyone who works in the age services sector for the critical role that you play in our community. Now, LASER's Excellence in Age Services awards state, territory, state and territory finalists and the national winners who you'll hear from in this presentation are to be particularly acknowledged because they demonstrate the incredible care, commitment and innovation displayed by our members. And they are indeed a subset of the wonderful work that goes on every day in our sector right across Australia. Congratulations to you all. Hello and welcome to the 2020 Laser Excellence in Age Services Awards National Presentation, which we are delivering to you online as part of our marvellous 10 Days of Congress virtual event. It's a pleasure to have you with us. My name is Kerry Lanchester and I'm the General Manager of Member Relations at LASER and your host for today's presentation. Now in their third year as a national awards program, these awards continue to provide a platform to allow us as an industry to celebrate the passion and outstanding achievements of organisations, teams and individuals in the service of older Australians. At an unprecedented time in history, with the challenges of COVID-19, our industry has had a chance to shine in protecting and serving our most vulnerable citizens. People working in aged care have gone above and beyond, and it's important to recognise and celebrate best practice in the industry and the positive impact it can have on people's lives. Each of our nominees have already won their state or territory award and are well deserving of the honour and industry admiration. Congratulations to them for being recognised as national finalists. The National Laser Excellence in Age Services Awards were judged by consumer and age services industry reps across the five categories. Our judges noted that this year it was difficult to determine a winner from an outstanding field of nominees. And of course, these awards would not be possible without the very generous support of our sponsors, Hester. It is now my pleasure to introduce Hester's Client Partnership Manager, Nanita Smith, to say a few words. But first, please enjoy this short recording from Hester CEO, Debbie Blakey. As the industry super fund dedicated to the health and community services sector, Hester is extremely proud to have invested $19 million in the development of Corangi, a groundbreaking new dementia care village that opened its doors this week. I wanted to congratulate everyone at Glenview, the aged care provider behind this truly visionary project. CEO Lucio Flati and her team have worked so very hard over the past two years to bring this project to life. Corangi represents a huge step forward in how we care for people living with dementia. And we hope this will encourage innovation and improvement in dementia care that could benefit so many Australians and their families. At Hester, we believe that to make a difference to the financial future of every member, we must also consider how we can help address big social challenges like dementia. The investment in Corrigy is part of our impact investment program. These investments aim to deliver an appropriate market-based financial return for Hester members as well as a measurable social impact. Impact investing is also part of a much bigger focus at HESTA about how we can earn strong long-term returns for members while also contributing to a healthier society and planet. We also hope that investments like Corangi will encourage other large investors like super funds to make their own impact investments. If even a tiny slice of our almost $3 trillion super industry start investing for impact, it will make a huge difference. And by encouraging the growth of Australia's impact investment market, we're also helping to create more jobs and opportunities for HESTA members working in the health and community services sectors. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are all digitally meeting on today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend that same respect to any Indigenous people that are digitally attending today. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, my name is Nanita Smith and I am one of the Hester Client Partnership Managers based in Queensland. As our CEO Debbie explained, Kurunji is an innovative village pioneering a new approach to caring for people living with dementia which opened in Tasmania in July 2020. The village was developed through a partnership between industry super fund Hester, not-for-profit aged care provider Glenview and Social Ventures Australia. This is an important investment for us as almost a quarter of our 850,000 Hester members work in aged care. As partners in their future, we are committed to driving meaningful change for the sector and the millions of Australians who depend on it. In light of the challenges that a Royal Commission brings, plus the stress that the pandemic has put both residents and employees under, it is more important than ever to shine a light on the leadership, innovation and passion being demonstrated within aged services nationally. We know people don't work in aged care for the recognition, they also don't do it for awards or external praise, and they definitely don't expect that praise to come their way either. But when it does, the sense of pride it brings is tangible. It is that wonderful feeling of being recognised that can help you get through the stress, the struggle and the challenges that you are all faced with each and every day. It reinforces the work you do, the impact you have and the valuable role you all play in our communities. We know that feeling is important and that feeling is what can keep the fire burning, particularly in dark times. Which is why we are so delighted to be partnering with LASER for their Excellence in Aged Care Services Awards to invest in moments like these and why we want you to put yourselves first. As Sean mentioned, the sector is known for putting others first and at Hester we want you to take the time to think about yourself and the future you'll retire into with our help. These times have certainly highlighted the significant impact good advice provides with giving members peace of mind and to make the best decisions for their financial future. So if you are a HESTA member and would like to take the opportunity to get advice on your super, please get in touch with us as you can receive advice about your HESTA account at no extra cost. There are also some wonderful interactive webinars available for everyone to view at no cost on our HESTA website. Topics such as accessing your super, understanding investment markets and what to consider in the lead up to retirement. We are also still tailoring education and advice sessions for your workplaces just in more of a digital format now, as well as providing face-to-face -face visits where possible in a COVID safe way of course, with the help of our wonderful employers and partners. I just wanted to finish by personally thanking each and every one of you for the selfless and incredible work you all do. I hope you hear this a lot as you truly are all amazing and we really appreciate the work you all do for us and our community. We also wanna thank LASER for the tireless work you do in advocating on behalf of the sector and we celebrate and congratulate all the finalists and winners of this year's awards. Thank you. The first category is a team award and this award recognises a team working within the aged services industry that's created an environment that encourages workplace diversity, positive workplace culture, and increased staff wellbeing through development of a service or process, or has used innovation and initiative to improve the lives of older people and improve the aged services experience. And the finalists are, Collaborative Leadership Model, Morris Zeffert Home. So, um, Morris Zeffert, is a 60 year old faith based not for profit organisation offering residential care, retirement living, meals on wheels, and day lounge services to the Jewish community of Perth. We made the decision to put a proposal to the board outlining a new innovative um, model of uh, management, and that came out to be the collaborative leadership model. So they took us all on trial for 12 months which ultimately became quite successful, therefore it's moved on into the future. And we're led to believe that internationally it's quite um, common for this model, however in Australia we think that we're the first aged care organisation to um, have this in place. Really great to be able to represent WA um, and in particular to represent independent not-for-profits on a, on a much larger scale, so we're just having that acknowledgement um, amongst our peers is really special to us, so we're very grateful for that. Collaborative Team, Princess Court, Jacaranda Village, Sunraysia Institute of TAFE and Murray House.
I'm Darren Mitchley. I'm the CEO of Chapey Aged Care, uh, one of four aged care providers who have formed a collaborative interagency team consisting of Chapey Aged Care, Princess Court Homes, Murray House, Jacaranda Village and St Rainier Institute of TAFE. Our organisations work in a collaborative way to enhance the experience and outcomes for care recipients across the northwest of Victoria and across the border into far west New South Wales. Together, our organisations provide aged care services for 325 residents and contribute over $25 million to the economy, employing nearly 400 staff. Through 2019-2020, a joint partnership with St Rosier Institute of TAFE combined with funding through the Department of Education, enabled the four facilities to offer staff leadership training to over 30 staff. Not only has this training helped to develop future leaders within our organisations, but it has allowed the sharing of knowledge through the interactive on-site delivery model. The collaborative tailor-made training framework was innovative and it was designed so that it could be duplicated in other regions. A number of the graduates of the first group have already advanced to higher roles and four staff members have moved from the certificate level training into higher education studies due to the additional confidence that they've gained and the knowledge that they've gained also through this program. Right. As we've always worked in a collaborative way, sharing resources, supporting each other and working collaboratively on areas of common interest. We were so very excited to win the LASER Team Award at the Victoria Tasmania State Awards and receiving that award recognised and validated the true collaboration and team effort behind the amazing project. This achievement further strengthened the strong bonds between our organisations uh, and particularly as we're standalone not-for-profit organisations, we depend very heavily on the support of each other. Let's dig in team from Bolton Clark. Uh, I'm Lucy Yarko from the Bolton Clark Research Institute and I'm here with Rekha Singh, our diversional therapist at Inverpine, who is the, the engine behind the Let's Dig In program and uh, we're just so thrilled to be in the, the national uh, finals uh, for our Let's Dig In program and it's really been a, an amazing team effort. Uh, we've had support from our hotel services teams, Caroline Lucas and all the amazing chefs that are a central kitchen who have been taking mysterious boxes of produce and turning them into beautiful meals that are being enjoyed by the residents here at Inverpine and also some of our other uh, care homes in the surrounding area. And Rekha, you want to talk about our residents? Yes, our residents, um, they have contributed really well. Um, like each time we had this produce, so they wanted to know what we're having to eat, when we're having to eat, what is going to involve with the recipe. Uh, and how they used to use those ingredients uh, in their own recipe. And um, of course, um, so I think overall everyone has, you know, dug in like 100% uh, to see this project through. Um, the residents over here, like our manager Shalini, our hotel services staff, um, our catering staff at um, Central Catering, our research team, maintenance team, and not forgetting uh, the directional therapy team and the volunteers. So everyone was inclusive, everyone has given the 100%. It is a, tr a tremendous effort. We're very grateful to Perpetual Trustees Queensland for providing the, the funding to get this program off the ground. And we're seeing the, the, the state championship has spurred some interest. Of course, we've been spreading the news around to our other uh, care homes in, uh, in Queensland. And we've got interest from our site in, in Kapulcher, just north of here, who is opening up a brand new building next month and are very keen to, to bring that stay in to the, the residents, both the residents of the care home and also involving the retirement village residents as participants and also volunteers to help get the program uh, up, up and running. Shoalhaven and Eurobadala Aged Care Centre teams, the IRT group. Um, so the team at IRT um, and for the Aged Care uh, Award. So we had the Aged Care um, Shoalhaven and Eurobadala Care Centre team. We also had the retirement village team, um, home care, um, and then also we had our shared services divisions that supported the team throughout um, the fires. So we had our catering who um, assisted only the normal meals delivery um, to all of our sites through road, road closures, but they also became our medical supplies. Uh, to supplier to get them to the sites. We had our procurement team um, 
involved resourcing and getting equipment that either catering or um, facilities maintenance needed. Um, in regards to facilities maintenance, we had them um, looking at generators and getting the sites prepped in case the fires did hit any one of our centres. Um, then we had our executive team who were part of the critical incident management team throughout um, the incident itself through the Gen December, January time period. So lots of multiple people involved in this team um, that made it, a, uh, made it a team. And so you had your front line right through to your CEO. Um, we never ever imagined that we would, would win um, the state. So to become a state finalist um, has been fantastic. What it really meant was that the nomination was for a teamwork. Um, and as I mentioned before, we had so many people within the organisation that made it a team. So um, by having shared services and our three business units being aged care centres, retirement villages and home care all coming together for the one purpose and that was to keep our residents and our um, people safe. Um, that was recognition in itself um, that we got through that. Um, so now to become a national finalist, um, it just demonst demonstrates all of the above in the community spirit and the team that we all were trying to do what the main thing is and that's the purpose to keep people safe. And the maintenance team from Wurlokra Home. It's a wonderful achievement to be able to um, be nominated for something like that. Um, as a team, um, we, all, we all put in, help each other, um, do what we have to do in the garden and maintenance. Um, so much to do here outside in the garden. Um, it's just a wonderful achievement. It's uh, um, better to have in our cap, actually, something like that. It's, yeah, and I think um, we're pretty proud about that. Um, residents and staff, um, they're all on board. They're pretty happy and proud of us. It's been a good trip. Well, I, I'm the team leader, and I just um, I have to check all the maintenance forms and that in the morning and jobs to see what jobs is on and then um, liaise with the other workers to um, organise which one's going to go where. And Being able to listen to their pass before they came into the home, there's, uh, we got people in here who used to be um, in the Navy, they used to race boats and just being able to listen to um, their stories is, is amazing. So. There you go. Keep it hooray for the boys! Hey. 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 <laughs> and the winner is Collaborative Leadership Model Morris Effort Home. Congratulations. Sincerely, we'd like to thank Hester and Lisa. Uh, both organisations are so vital to our industry um, and the amazing support work that they do. Uh, to support people who work in this sector and also those who receive services from this sector is really outstanding. We're really grateful for their support. Um, and also we hope that our win really encourages independent providers to be brave, um, have courage and um, accept and embrace innovation um, and you know, just sort of get, get on board, get in working relationships with your boards, help improve the governance of your organisation. And so thank you very much. Go The next category is the Organisation Award, and this award recognises an aged services provider who has made an outstanding contribution to care and services development or the provision of high level support to the aged by demonstrating leadership, innovation and excellence. And the finalists are Communify Queensland. My name is Georgina Holloway and I work for Communify Queensland. We are a non-for-profit based in the inner north of Brisbane. So uh, in that role, I manage a variety of services, one of which is our social support services, which we are particularly proud of. We have a variety of groups and activities that go on um, around our area on any given day. But the two groups that we're particularly proud of and what we nominated for this award for are our evening groups. So we recognised quite early on that uh, there is a real gap in service delivery for out, um, outside of routine hours 
activities. So we thought that uh, to close that gap, we could offer some activities in the evening. One is Sip and Paint. It's uh, facilitated by a guided art therapist and our clients come in um, early evening and we offer them supper, a few glasses of wine and it's a really social, happy, fun group. Uh, all of our clients just love it. They get dressed up. It's, uh, we decorate the room so it's really beautiful and, and we make a really huge effort to, to have it as a special evening out. And the second evening group is our culture club. So we have a partnership with QPAC and they offer us uh, discounted tickets to go to some of their shows. When we won the award and now that we're in for the national award, we just uh, are so excited and proud because we, uh, you know, it gives us extra motivation to think about what else we could do um, that is a little bit more interesting and uh, offers a, you know, just interesting, uh, normal activities for people. Um, you know, we truly believe that age shouldn't be a barrier, but so often it is. Uh, so we're totally committed to um, offering uh, services and supports and activities that um, encourage thinking outside the box, and that's what we love to do. So, Echo Community Services. I'm Jonathan Smith. I am very fortunate to be the CEO of ECHO Community Services. In 2018, ECHO started on a bit of a journey to try and make sure we had the right culture and the right processes in place to deliver on that My Mum philosophy and, and specifically to make sure that we could deliver truly individualised consumer directed care because we could see that, you know, um, that was the direction that uh, the industry as a whole was moving. And we also wanted to make sure we were using the latest modern evidence-based contemporary good practice. So we established a culture club. We, we really focused on the culture first. We established a culture club. We had, uh, we had staff from every part of the organisation. We involved clients, we involved volunteers, we involved our board, and we developed a set of values. And those values are excellence, compassion, honesty, and opportunity, which obviously spell out the word ECHO, E-C-H-O. And, and, and I'm pretty confident that if you ask any staff member in the organisation, they can tell you what those values are. We were incredibly excited when we learnt that we were the WA winners. Uh, it's, it's a real honour and, and I think in some ways we felt that was a, a real validation for all the changes that we've been making over the last few years. It's been such an intense year for, for everybody in the sector and a win like that, it really helped to lift our team at a point when they really needed it and it helped give us a bit of extra energy and help doing the work that we'd all been doing together. Helping Hand Aged Care. So Helping Hand has recognised that a, a student unit dedicated to student learning can result in much more than just student placements. Opportunities to test out and innovate with our service provision have, have actually resulted in lots of changed outcomes of the way we operate at Helping Hand. We now have an exercise physiology department as a result of testing and trialling exercise physiology students within our organisation. We're able to provide additional reminiscence services for older people and we have increased oral health assessments by having partnerships with dental hygiene students. These are the types of opportunities that we've been able to generate through this different approach to student placement. I think it's been really exciting to have Helping Hand recognise for its organisational approach to student engagement and the outcomes that it has been able to showcase as a result of that program. The program has reached across the organisation into our operational areas. It has enabled us to to show that student learning can result in changes to residents and changes to the way that we develop services and, and work with our older clients. That training and education doesn't just happen in the training and education sector, that aged care providers can take a leading role in developing and structuring training and placements to ensure that our future workforce is able to respond to the emerging needs that we, we are that are that are changing constantly. Kin care. 
I'm Jason Howie, I'm KingCare's CEO, and I'm in a privileged position to lead a team who are incredibly caring, passionate, and committed to providing not only the best, but the safest care possible to our customers, which as we all know from the recent months can be incredibly challenging. Uh, we're also incredibly focused on the safety and wellbeing of our teams, and I'm very proud of the way that the team have come together to support each other during these difficult times. Having led the organisation for many years, uh, my role is instrumental in steering the team through periods of change and ensuring that we look to innovate and really lead the industry in terms of our customer focus. Uh, KingCare's values support the organisation's vision and they shape our culture. Uh, our philosophy is our customer and one team. Our customers are our focus and the reason we're here and every interaction we have is to improve their lives. I, along with the leadership team, have been very focused on all the aspects of our service delivery and really focusing on the customer experience. Uh, this has been no more important than it has been this year when everything changed so quickly and dramatically. Uh, as an organisation, we never lost focus on the wellbeing and safety of our people and our customers. We were announced as the state winner for New South Wales, there was an enormous sense of pride for the team. Uh, it's always encouraging to have the hard work and commitment that we've all had to our customers recognised, particularly this year when so many of the team have gone well above and beyond to ensure that our customers are still being so well cared for. Uh, it was a great boost for the team to have this industry acknowledgement. And Princess Court Homes. Princess Court, it's, it's about the staff and the commitment and the passion that the staff have. It really is just this genuine love for the residents and really providing the best that they can, um, not, just, not just with what they do on an every day, but extras. We, we also connect with the community and we're always looking for opportunities that we can enhance the residents' lives. Um, it was such an honour, really, for um, a, small, a small facility independent to be able to, to win um, a state award. And, uh, you know, for Mildura, which is six hours from Melbourne and four hours from Adelaide, to, to be even up there, um, we were just um, very, very surprised um, and also very thankful. Um, it was, was terrific also that the staff, we could acknowledge the staff and what they're doing. And, you know, they, they really do put so much love and commitment into their work. And it was that opportunity to be able to say thank you to them. Um, but also to, to recognise that by, by doing things which are a little bit different, by taking that, that additional care and an additional thinking, we can do that, um, getting a group of people together, it can happen. And, you know, we can make things, ha make sure that the resident's life is really enhanced by the different activities and the connections. Because when you, when you come to an aged care facility, you, most of the people here are part of the community. And when you come to an aged care facility, you don't stop being part of that community just because of a gate. It's about making sure that gate is, is open and that we have that, that genuine ongoing connection with that community. And the community is also still connected to the aged care facility. Congratulations to all the wonderful organisations. And the winner is Princess Court Homes. Congratulations. In, in, take, in accepting this award, award, you really have to think about the people right across Australia and what they're going through this year with um, the pandemic. It's, it's been a really an emotional and just such a, a difficult period for everybody and very challenging. And so I, I really think that an award like this, I'd love to be able to share it with everybody right across Australia. I think everybody needs a, a good pat on the back for what we all have done and all, what we're all achieving on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, if we can carve it up into little pieces, that would be very, that would be wonderful. But, you know, I, I think it just, just shows not just the bigger organisations, but small towns and regional towns that anything's possible and you can enrich everybody's lives just by saying we can do it a little bit differently and putting that extra commitment and, and time to get it to happen. The next category is the next gen young leader. 
This is a new category this year and recognises an innovative, bold and inclusive young leader under the age of 40 who has made an outstanding contribution to the aged services industry and has used passion, drive and initiative to improve the lives of older people. And the finalists are Gabriella De Perna, formerly of Mercy Care. So my name is Gabriella Di Perna. I have been managing major projects in aged care for Mercy Care in a senior management role. My projects included our responses to the Royal Commission into aged care and the implementation of the new aged care quality standards. I've also managed two collaborative research projects in response to the Royal Commission and the new standards. One, the digital empowerment project that I conceptualized, initiated and led for Mercy Care in partnership with Queensland University of Technology and software company Checked In Care. And then of course my favorite is the intergenerational practice project, which is a partnership between Griffith University, Mercy Care, John 23 College and other community organizations in WA, such as Melville Cares and Altira Living. Um, Personally, my role at Mercy Care has recently been made redundant due to COVID-19. And a long story short, I managed to secure grant funding from the Cromwell Property Group Foundation. And I am now project managing the intergenerational practice pilot together with Mercy Care and all the other community organizations out of Griffith University as project manager in the role of research fellow, which is great and I absolutely love it. Now, becoming a national winner would mean, I guess, more doors to open. And if I win, I would embrace those opportunities and I would use it to advance collaboration across the states between researchers and the sector and encourage those who, like me, perhaps have to re-engineer their roles due to COVID-19. And all in all, I want to pursue this for the benefit of older people, younger people within our community to really counter ageism. Tom Gray, Extra Aged Care. So I'm Tom Gray. I'm a physiotherapist and regional lead with Extra Aged Care, um, sort of a national mobile health company, but based in Adelaide. Um, so my role is to pretty well oversee a team of about 15 to 20 staff across seven different aged care facilities around sort of Adelaide and sort of regional South Australia. A lot of job variety, have to be very versatile, but yeah, really enjoy the sort of fast paced environment and sort of rewarding um, opportunity to sort of work not only with sort of the aged care residents and facilities to improve sort of their care and service, but also work with sort of our frontline staff as well. Very, very humbling to be recognised as sort of even a finalist in the inaugural um, sort of SANT um, Next Gen sort of winners. Um, to receive the award was just such a huge surprise and a big achievement for me and really sort of, yeah, it was a nice little pat on the back for that effort and hard work within aged care and the future of aged care in really good hands and how we've got a lot of amazing young leaders within the industry who really want to create change and sort of inspire a lot of other people to improve that. Tyler Haining, Martin Luther Holmes. I'm Tyler Haining. I'm a medication endorsed personal care assistant at Martin Luther Holmes. I did my work placement here while I was in my last year of school and I really enjoyed the workplace. Um, I've now worked as a personal care assistant at Martin Luther Holmes for two years now and my role includes um, providing everyday care to our residents but not just personal care but also providing emotional care and support. Um, encouraging residents to come out of their rooms and socialise and attend activities. I think it's really important, especially during these times, for our residents not to feel isolated and lonely, but to come out of their rooms and engage and interact with the people that are there to support them and that they can interact with. Um, I've also helped train students in our dementia wards and also our transition care unit, 
which is a new unit that started over a year ago, I think now, um, which basically just helps patients who have had incidents or strokes or any accidents um, or surgeries, help them get back to their home life or transition into, um, into residential aged care. I think, yeah, I love building a relationship with the residents. I think it's really important to be able to communicate with them and build a relationship on a somewhat personal level, um, just to so they feel comfortable enough to talk to you and talk about their stories and stuff like that. Um, I think, yeah, I was I work alongside an amazing team of physiotherapists, nurses, carers, everyone, and we all work together in trying to better the lives of elder people. So I think without my whole team and everybody in my organisation, I don't think any of it would have been possible. So it's a very team orientated job, yeah. Um, so becoming a state winner really meant a lot to me. It was um, a great feeling of achievement and I was very proud. Um, not only proud for myself, but proud of like the career I, path I've chosen um, and proud of my whole organisation. Um, it's just very humbling and to be recognised and noticed. Um, going to work every day is a reward within itself, but to be noticed and have this award it means a lot. It's really, really special, yeah. Simon Kerrigan, Guide Healthcare. Okay, my name's Simon Kerrigan. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'm a physiotherapist. Uh, I've been working in aged care for the last eight years. And I suppose what I've been trying to do is, is assist older adults to live healthier and happier lives. Um, primarily through movement and exercise. Um, I just think movement and exercise has such a, uh, a positive benefit and such a, such a big, um, such a great capacity to, to help people to, to be more independent um, and obviously to, to improve their, their physical function, but also their psychological well-being. So it really gives people the opportunity to, um, uh, to have a better outlook and obviously to, to feel like they're, they're living a, a more positive um, and happy, happy life. So, uh, you know, I'm a big advocate for, for movement and exercise. Um, in the, for the last two years, I've been the Managing Director of Guide Healthcare. Um, we're an allied health service provider, um, primarily physio, physio and OT services into residential aged care. Um, you know, aged care is a passion for me. Um, the, what, the reason why I started Guide and the reason why we do what we do is obviously to try and create a, a benefit, um, you know, create a, a really positive impact for residents, improve their, their, their lives and do what we can as, as um, allied health professionals and beyond with our social justice stuff um, to try and make sure that they're, you know, living the best lives that they can and, and, and we're creating an impact. Um, but yeah, look, the other thing was just, it was pretty awesome to be able to tell the residents and to kind of celebrate with them. That was pretty incredible. Um, obviously I touched on it, my initial New South Wales chat that we had about the fact that none of what we do would be possible without kind of the bravery and the, uh, you know, commitment and, and just the willingness to give things a go um, of our residents. Like they're really the people that allowed me to, to do those things and with the team, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, the thanks really went to them and, and we obviously tried to touch base with, with everyone and be like, hey, we won this award and it was because of this awesome stuff that we did with you guys. So obviously, thank you. To them so yeah in summary it was amazing um, and obviously now to be recognized with other finalists from around australia is really really cool and jamie langdon from benevolent living yeah absolutely so my name's jamie langdon i work at benevolent living uh, in rockhampton we're a non-for-profit organization in central queensland so we are a regional provider and i am the marketing and communications manager here so i'm one of the youngest members on our team and I'm also one of the youngest members on our executive committee. So as an organization, uh, we're on a very exciting transformational journey and we are transforming aged care, as you know it here in central Queensland. And we have a very ambitious growth strategy over the next three years, uh, which will see us undergo a $50 million redevelopment project on site. So my role is very heavily um, in this transformational journey and I'm working to meet our strategic objectives and offer our residents and the seniors of our community a truly integrated home within a community within a community. Uh, my nomination really surrounded and centered around my strategic objectives and the community engagement work that 
I am doing here and the partnerships that I've been able to secure for our organisation and which has benefited not only our community here at Benevolent, but also the central community at large. Um, we've also been the first regional provider outside of Brisbane in Queensland to host an Aegis Play playgroup, um, which is a partnership with Playgroup Queensland. So that was very exciting to get them on board uh, and just the impact that it has had to our residents' lives has just been phenomenal. We've had one resident who didn't come to the dining room for meals, who wouldn't get involved in activities. And she she actually said to us that the playgroup has changed her life and it's, it's really brought meaning back to her. Yes. So, so uh, winning the Queensland Next Gen category was such an honor to me, um, not only for the recognition that it brings to me and my organization, but also to be the very first winner in the category, especially with the other uh, caliber of nominees that they were, they were absolutely incredible. So shout out to them. I love to see their stories as well. Um, it was really heartwarming to be acknowledged for my contributions uh, to the industry and to be able to positively showcase the things that we're doing here and how amazing a career in age services really can be. Um, the opportunities and the advancements that I've had over the last two years have really benefited me both personally and professionally and I am so glad that I took the leap and, and joined the industry two years ago. Such a wonderful new category. And the winner is Simon Kerrigan, Guide Healthcare. Congratulations. Can you, can you give me two minutes? Is that all right? All right, cool, one sec. You'll have to speed this bit up, videographer. This is probably as close as I'll ever get to, uh, to winning an Oscar or a, or a Logie or a, a BAFTA or any other manner of award, so. I wanted to look the part. We obviously can't be together at a conference, um, but certainly I thought I won't miss an opportunity to, to dress up and, 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 and obviously do my acceptance speech. Firstly, uh, I just wanted to thank the team at Guide Healthcare. Um, all of the, the things that I submitted, or every part of my nomination uh, was not possible without the assistance of all the members of our team, the incredible support, um, their willingness to, um, to support and, and drive and be a part of my crazy ideas and, and obviously to be a part of the vision that we have for God and to really work um, tirelessly every day to, to support the residents that we support. Um, I'd like to thank the organisations who we work with, obviously. Um, we can't implement the types of services that we do without the support of amazing organisations who see value in what we do and are willing to embrace change and, and try and do things a little bit differently, particularly with a small provider like us. So it's amazing to have the support and thank you to them. I want to thank Lassa, obviously, uh, for, for recognising the importance of celebrating young leaders. Um, you know, it, this, obviously this is the inaugural award and to be the inaugural winner uh, would be incredible. Uh, but obviously just to be recognised is amazing. And, and thank you to Lassa and obviously to Sam Bowen and, um, you know, everyone else who's, who's driven the Next Gen Initiative and, and, and celebrating young leaders within our space. Um, look, the aged care industry is going through some pretty major changes. Um, so I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's advocated for industry change. Um, I want to encourage everyone to have their voice and to, to talk about um, talk about aged care. Um, as a young leader, I hope to work in this space for another 30 or 40 years. Um, so obviously we're creating the aged care of the future and I, I want to make sure that the industry that we work in is, is something that we can all be proud of and, and obviously create an environment and create a system where we're really, where, where we're happy with what's happening and, and the fact that we feel that that residents and our older adults who are living within this, um, this system and these environments are really well supported. Um, so I'd encourage everyone to keep, you know, having their voice and, and keep putting, putting it out there. Put the positive stories out there. Um, and obviously if we need to criticize, we should criticize, but there's certainly lots and lots of good stuff happening. Keep finding your voice, um, keep advocating for change. Um, I'd, also, I'd also like to take this opportunity for anyone in aged care to think creatively. Um, you know, that's what, that's basically what I've always tried to do. Um, let's, creativity allows us to be solutions focused. If we're solutions focused, um, it means we're not just focusing on the problem. We're not, you know, we're, we're looking for ways to, to create positive change. So I think that's really important. Um, it's obviously amazing to win the award. Um,
you know, it wouldn't be possible. The, the nomination wouldn't have been possible again without their, their courage and their effort to push through pain, to push through fatigue, to push through feelings of, you know, of, of unhappiness potentially in order to, um, to get up and to, to participate in our events, to come along to our, our Get Up Live program, to do our weekly challenges, you know, all of these things wouldn't be possible without them. So, um, yeah, it's obviously a privilege to work in aged care. It's a privilege to work with the people that we do. Um, so yeah, the award is, is obviously for them. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully, um, yeah, and I, I hope to just keep, keep doing what I'm doing and, and keep working and keep um, trying to create positive change. Thank you. The next category is the Individual Award. And this award recognises an individual who's made an outstanding contribution to the aged services industry, has used innovation and initiative to improve the lives of older people and has delivered high quality care to the aged. And the finalists are Ki Yu Anand from St Anna's Residential Aged Care Facility. Hi, my name is Ki Yu Anand and I'm a nurse practitioner um, at St Anna's Residential Care Facility. Um, I work as a nurse practitioner and as we know, nurse practitioner is quite wide range of scope practice. Um, Along with providing clinical uh, services, I also provide clinical guidance to the uh, newly graduate nurses or junior nurses who come and work in aged care. Um, so that's one of my main roles. Um, along with that, um, I promote nurse practitioner into aged care, going around different nursing homes as well. Uh, show them that, okay, how important to have nurse practitioner in aged care facility. And I've been really lucky to to be employed by uh, St. Anna, so I'm very proud of it. So what I did was I created the post-fall assessment uh, guidance for the nurses um, who are not even experienced. So everything is there, they just, they just have to follow the steps. I've been educating them. So what that has done is that has prevented a lot of unnecessary hospital admissions and I increased the monitoring. Um, also provide them better understanding the nurses that what they have to monitor, how they're going to monitor. Um, and now currently I'm working on palliative care project, virtual reality palliative care project, uh, which is quite exciting. Um, as I said before, as well, when I, I was nominated for the state, um, um, that we are creating, we're planning to create a virtual reality because I think the most important thing is how the nurse is going to break the uh, news to the family that, okay, look, we have reached to the stage where there is, um, there is no other thing can be done and the goal should be comfort care. So one of the thing in that virtual reality would be we create, we will create a patient, a family, uh, we'll create a few questions, already been created, questions have been created. So there will be easy family, there will be complicated family members who will be asking you the complicated questions, who might be registered for the palliative care, and how the plan, how the nurses will make them understand better or how will they communicate better. Julie Follin, Kawinda. So my name's Julie Follin and um, I work at Kawinda in Benalla, Northeast Victoria. Um, I've been working in aged care for 44 years now. Um, and the last 22 years I've been here at Kawinda. My passion and interest in um, caring for older people has just grown over the years, as have the roles that I've been lucky enough to take on over the, that time, particularly here at Kawinda. What really motivates me every single day is, is um, the work I do with the residents and family. And, and that's around from the time they you know, want to learn about Kawinda and that transition into care. Um, I can only imagine how challenging that must be, how overwhelming and stressful that can be for families and the resident. So for me, it's it's about the really simple things, um, just stepping into their shoes, really trying to, and I, I feel I, I, do, I can do that. Um, and I just sort of take on every person that I meet like it's my own parents. Um, when I think about the nomination, I truly don't think of it as, a, an, as an individual award because I can't do what I do without the team. And, and my team are the residents, it's the, the volunteers, it's the staff, it's, it's the leadership team, it's the board. You know, we're all in this together. Um, and it feels incredible to have people that 
um, or to have our efforts recognised by people that aren't in our day-to-day -day kawinda. Um, you know, and when I met some of the other finalists and and um, and and people who won awards, that when we went to the conference, it was amazing and it was really inspiring to to be around people who feel the same as us and who are really enthused about aged care and um, and I guess you know we've got so many amazing people that are out there in the industry um, and. Uh, you know, it's very it's very rewarding and satisfying work but it's also really challenging and it's hard work it's hard work for so many so i guess it's a great way to recognize all the hard work that everybody does and 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 you know not just here at kawinda but all the organizations that have been nominated and won some awards over the years it's it's a really good feeling so it's it's just great that it's happening helen nolan compatible care nursing services my name's Helen. Um, I am the CEO Managing Director at Compatible Care. Um, my role is to look after the strategic direction, the corporate governance and the finances. Um, I'm an active member on all of the LISA advisory groups um, and this gives me first hand knowledge on issues that are affecting our providers in the aged care sector. We also at Compatible volunteer a lot of time to CODA WA which enables me to get some insight on what our older Australians need and it helps me to make business decisions on how we can guide the company to better cater for our age community. I actively participate in every opportunity to learn and grow our business and focus purely on supporting the aged care sector and I'm very passionate about quality care and great outcomes not only for older Australians but for our providers that we broker to as well so that's who I am and where I take the business and who, who Compatible Care is. It means a lot. I was very overwhelmed, as you saw. Um, very, very overwhelmed. Uh, as mentioned, I've come from a hospitality background, so it kind of makes me feel now that I am integrated and an aged care, aged care worker. Um, I don't feel like such a um, fish out of water anymore. Uh, we've worked really hard, I've worked very hard developing the team and really trying to make a difference in this sector. And I guess that reward really brought home that all our efforts are being recognised and are, and are making a difference. So I think, you know, gives me the dream that maybe we can go national. <laughs> Shez Thompson. Bolton Clark. Okay, so I'm, I'm Shez, I'm the Diversional Therapist at Bolton Clark Rose Bay in Townsville. We have the Million Dollar View. Uh, we're a two floor building, so our residents often come to Bolton Clark where we are, overlooking the ocean for that lovely, lovely one million dollar view, as I said. So my job um, originally was a personal care worker and I saw that there needed to be change. Uh, I saw board residents, um, residents that had no hope, despair, depression, and thought, well, I love being a PCW, but I can do more for these residents. I, I can bring them happiness, accomplishment, um, meaningful life. So my dedication was to changing the lives of every individual in aged care, individually, one at a time, because we are all different. And ind individually, um, we're a different person. So everybody's needs, desires, wants, and what they can and can't do, I need to evaluate that and make sure that I can accommodate their needs, desires, and with whatever aid that I can use. Often I'll have people say, oh, but I can't do that anymore. And I'll go, yeah, but with this and this, we can accomplish that. And it'd be, well, you've just given that lady probably another five years because now they realise they can still accomplish things, whether, you know, they're lo losing their cognition, um, ability to move a hand well we can help with all different aids these days and so bringing life and meaningful accomplishment to these residents is what's important it means um, being heard and what I'm doing is working I'm an individual we're all individuals and individually we have to make that step and if I hadn't made that step for all those DTs activity officers out there that want to bring life to our residents and um, different and home-like life. It's like being at home. It was so um, overwhelming and I felt so proud of myself. Um, 
the first time I've ever won anything. So that was like, oh my God, really, has this happened? I wasn't too sure, but yeah, it did happen. I'm very proud and my team are very proud at work as well. That's so good. And Ben Van Lierop, RSL Life Care. My name is uh, Ben Van Lierop and uh, I've been working at RSL Life Care for three and a half years. And currently I am the Executive General Manager of People of Culture. And I, I, uh, one of my primary roles is managing a wonderful team that oversee the service functions of human resources, learning development, work health and safety and payroll. My primary responsibility uh, in, age, in the age services is to design and implement a workforce strategy that will support and enable our employees to think creatively, drive innovation and adapt to increasing operational demands so that they can engage and develop meaningful relationships with all stakeholders of RSL Life Care. The focus of my role is to align workforce capability to deliver extraordinary customer experiences. It was uh, extremely hum humbling and a real honour uh, to be acknowledged for something you love doing, uh, which is all about developing, growing and supporting people, which is a sincere privilege, especially when there are so many people in our wonderful industry doing so many incredible things. The New South Wales ACT Award and this very special nomination is not just about me. It is a wonderful shared achievement that reinforces and celebrates the amazing work so many people are doing at RSL Life Care. I feel very proud and grateful for the opportunity to be nominated for such a prestigious award. Thank you. Congratulations to all finalists. And the winner is Kiyu Anand, St Anna's Residential Care Facility. Congratulations, Kiyu. <laughs> I'm speechless, I'm speechless. I mean, I don't really get speechless, but um, I can't really find the word to express my feeling, but um, I really feel proud of myself too uh, for winning this award. Um, and as I said, when I won the national uh, state award, that winning this award might encourage at least 10 nurses to go forward and do further studies. And if one or two become a nurse practitioner in aged care, I will be truly winner then. I would really like to thank all my um, mentors who have guided me all this way, starting from my care, when I was a carer, um, 2009 when I started working as a carer, 2010, sorry, I work, started working as a carer. I had good mentors who promoted me, who, who encouraged me to go further and do register nursing. When I became the register nurse, um, uh, Amanda and the team always supported me and encourage me to go further and do further studies. So I think I would like to thank them. Their hard work has paid off <laughs> today. Um, I'd like to thank Leza too for identifying all this thing and appreciating all the hard work people are doing in aged care. Our final category this afternoon is the Rising Star. And this award recognises an individual with less than five years industry experience who has made an outstanding contribution to the aged services industry, has used innovation and initiative to improve the lives of older people and has delivered high quality care to the aged. And the finalists are Amaret Smith, Kuinda. I just love being an advocate for our residents. That's my main focus is our, is our residents. And I just love being able to um, help them make their own choices and guide them and um, just with my um, and also just giving them the best care I can and being a, a support person for them and um, yeah it's lovely to see a lot of them you know they they thank you so much and they're so caring and so you know they, we treat them all, I treat them all like I'm like you know family <laughs> Just, I suppose aged care is, it's got a real stigma on it now. And I suppose being an, a nurse, yes, I am losing some of, or not getting some of my skills that I've worked, that I, that I should be getting. But, and I suppose and it's more about putting your hand up as well. If you're not sure, like ask, yeah, about, you know, Nikki pumps and just trying to, yeah, boost my skills. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> like it, it's, it's sometimes too, like even when I won the um, state, I just couldn't believe it. It just, 
it makes me feel really good inside to just to be recognized for what i've what i've done like i'm very um just oh you know i'm not it's not that you know but it is <laughs> and i'm starting to recognize that in myself and it's just given me the confidence um and just just the confidence and knowing that i provide the best care and um it gives me a lot of clarity to my future um, and the possibilities, just, yeah. John Sisson, Churches of Christ in Queensland. Hi, so my name is John Sisson. I am a clinical support officer here at Churches of Christ in Queensland. Um, my role entails basically under the clinical governance role. Um, I deal with support for the sites um, and also deal with some of the tech sites as well. We have a fall register, um, so if a resident has a fall, we check each of the individual possibilities of why this is occurring. Um, we put recommendations on there and then we give that to the service. So for example, we gather all the data for all the sites um, and then we see a trend and then we forward that over to the sites as well. So it's basically more um, informational or easier to read for the service and they can see Okay, so these are the steps that we have to undertake to provide better care for the residents. Yes. Uh, so yes, um, getting the national awards is going to be a huge achievement for not me and my team, um, not me, but just for my team as well and the whole organization, because that just means that we do try and push more innovation towards the um, whole of Australia. Basically, this is um, that's where it's going. So yes. Hadja Sue, Echo. Yes, so my name is Hadja and I'm a scheduler at Echo Community Services. We deal with crises every day, whether it is to cover sick calls or putting urgent services in place on time. I guess the trick is to keep a cool head and always have the client's best interests at heart. I think this nomination is a recognition that being there for our clients required going beyond and above our prescribed duties and thinking outside the box. To me, this means treating every client as I would treat my own parents. Where I come from, each people are sacred. Um, I think that's the right word. And I try to bring those values with me at ECHO all the time, every time I'm doing a scheduling role or whatever I'm asked to do. By the nomination, um, I just I thank everyone for supporting me and believing in me. Um, I think it is a validation that working hard and treating people with respect and compassion is the right thing to do. It also means that our effort to put our clients at the heart of everything we do are bearing fruit. <laughs> Kathy White. RSL Life Care. Hi, I'm Kathy White. I'm the Home Care Coordinator for RSL Life Care at Home uh, for North West Sydney. My passion lies with helping the elderly. Um, even before I actually commenced in aged care, I was the person who would be nattering to somebody at the register at Coles. Um, a lot of people say that they love working with children. Well, that's not me. I love working with the elderly. Um, I seem to get just so much joy and satisfaction from helping them. They provide me with so much. I learn from them every day. And I know that I give them a lot, but they also give me a lot in return. So I'm getting quite emotional. Yeah, wow. It was... Um, I'm still gobsmacked that I won actually so it was a wonderful honour to receive such a prestigious award especially thinking about the people that are out there um, in this sector you know they're all so dedicated hard-working and compassionate people um, I feel really proud I've had so many people contact me um, you know through Facebook and you know everywhere just saying to me Kathy wow what a job well done 
Um, I just hope that um, this award actually showcases to the greater community um, all the good things that actually happen in aged care because we have so many positives and all we seem to hear is you know the absolute negatives that go on. Um, I also hope that um, this award actually does encourage others to make a career change like I've done, um, especially in these times of COVID. There's got to be lots of people out there that are looking for a job and I just say to them, come to the wonderful world of aged care. It's great. Congratulations to all Rising Star finalists. And the winner is... John Sisson, Churches of Christ in Queensland. Congratulations. Um, oh my God, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, thank you for the award. Um, really, really happy. I owe it all to my team. Um, thank you for the support from my friends and family. Thank you to Lhasa for um, this special award. Um, it's just a huge honor. Thank you very much. And that concludes the awards presentations. I'd like to finish with some acknowledgements. Thank you to my co-host, Nanita Smith from Hester for assisting in presenting the awards and for Hester's generous sponsorship of the Laser Excellence in Age Services Awards. Laser would also like to thank and acknowledge the official judging panels. These panels were made up of independent individuals who are industry experts and members of consumer bodies who volunteered their time to make a valuable contribution to our workforce. Thank you to everyone who nominated for the awards this year. We had an incredible lineup of nominees and we look forward to hearing about more outstanding efforts in next year's awards. And finally, thanks to all of you for tuning in today to support LASER's Excellence in Age Services Awards program and our 10 days of Congress. Music